guys, and welcome to Soul Chat with Ray. I'm your host, Psychic Medium Ray, and today I have a very, very special guest who is going to be joining us, so I'm just waiting for her to come on. Her name is Casey Poole. Hey, guys. Hope everybody is doing well. Hi. Welcome, guys, to Soul Chat with Ray. Again, I have a very, very special guest that's going to be coming on today. Hope everybody's doing well. So I'm just waiting for her to come on. So, so excited to do this live with her. Hi, guys. Wow, we have a crowd coming in. <laughs> Let me see if she's on. Thank you guys. You like my rose background? I don't see her on here yet. She must be trying to get on. Let me see. Hi guys. There she is. Hi. Hi. <laughs> How are you doing? Good, Ray. How are you? I'm doing so well. Thank you so much, Casey, for being here. Guys, before we start off anything, I just want to say, can I say, um, Casey is so unique. She is truly the real deal. Um, she was recommended to me by uh, Candy. You know Candy. Uh, she's like a second mom to me. And um, I, I'm the type of person up until you, I had never received Reiki. Um, you know, uh, I guess like from a long distance uh, from anyone, because I guess like I, you know, I just was very skeptical about um, Reiki masters or healers. Not that I don't trust them, but I'm very picky with my energy. And I know that when people tap in, you know, if it's not the right energy, then not the right person, it can cause um, maybe some unbalancement, you know, um, when it comes to your energy and healing. So um, I took a chance and I knew that I had been holding on to a lot of things. And I think that, you know, if you are listening today to myself and Casey, know that um, there are you don't have to do things by yourself. Everybody deserves to have healing. Everybody needs to like always, especially if you're in the spiritual realm, working spiritual stuff, doing spiritual things. Um, we tend to like absorb a lot of other people's energy and it, uh, it clogs up our auras and our energy fields. So Casey um, actually did my healing and she just blew my mind away she knew things that other people had never even because i've been to a lot of psychics and not a lot of people know a lot of things about me because i one i don't put a lot out of my personal life and whatnot but you knew a lot of details like specifics that just blew my mind away and i felt this heavy like oppressive energy just lift and i felt different you know completely different so it's like going to be part of my routine to come to you for healings uh monthly and i know that i had spoken to you about that but um i just wanted to throw out there that casey is the real deal she is amazing at what she does and i'll hand it over to you casey to tell them who where you're from what you do a little bit about yourself thank you ray <laughs> you're so, so welcome. nice so i like 
first, I want to touch base on what you said about the distant healing. A lot of people are very skeptical of distant healing. And, they're, and a lot of people ask, like, how are you even able to do distant healing? And, you know, why is it that you choose to do distant healing over in-person? Because a fun fact about me is that I don't offer in-person sessions. I specifically, <laughs> yes, I specifically am a distant healer helping clients worldwide. That's like my entire mission. And to be very truthful, I feel that spiritual workers kind of naturally step into what they're guided to step into. And so I don't know a ton of worldwide healers. Uh, I know a lot of people do a lot of like in-person Reiki and, and all of that. And so I was really guided by my team to start this like new process of you can, you can offer it at a distance. And now all of a sudden we're in this coronavirus and now everyone's like, I can do distant healing. And it's wonderful because you truly, truly can connect with people at a distance. Yeah. Um, and I'm actually more, way more powerful at a distance than I am in person. Absolutely. And um, you, your messages are um, so profound and your voice is very healing when you, uh, if you get a, a healing with Casey, and, um, she has several ones, but the one with the recording, I really recommend it because you get to hear your voice and kind of like a, an overview. I'm, I'm going to shut up now because I'm going to let you talk about no, it. No, that's okay. <laughs> Yeah, no, yeah, so so a little of like about where I sit. So I um I sit in San Diego, California. Um and I was kind of so I'm from Missouri originally and mm -hmm. when I moved out to California, about a year after I moved out to California, I had um a spiritual awakening and so my everyone's spiritual awakening is very different from each other. You've had a very different one than I even have. Yeah. And um mine just all happened. And it all happened like boom, 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 like third eye was open, open wow. channel was open, um, images were like coming at me. I felt like I was almost like, I don't know, I was really scared. I was like, what's happening to me? Um, and so that was back in 2017. And so since then, I've been doing it part time. I've been um, in the corporate world. Um, and then recently, actually about a month ago, I was laid off of my job and I was like, you know what, this is the time, this is the time to, the, the world needs more healers and the world needs people to truly, truly step into their power. And especially the authentic ones that really, really want to help people evolve. Um, because healing is powerful. It really is. Um, it's helped me a lot too. I've, I, I, I love healing. And well, I love you're healing. you're amazing, and I think that you know, like you said, it it is very truthful. I feel like you know, sometimes when we move locations, or you oh, know, yeah. you're, like I'm in Texas, but if I was to ever move, you know, when people move and shift around to a different environment, mm -hmm. your environments affect your spiritual abilities a lot, and also it can open you up um, latent gifts or gifts that have always been there but dormant. Um, I also feel like for you, you know, um, this whole path in us meeting was not a coincidence. I don't believe like anything in this okay. world happens by coincidence. It's always a rhyme and a reason that the universe has this coming together. Hi, Candy. Hi. Um, hi, Jennifer. Waller. Hi, guys. <laughs> hi, guys. So, um, you know, the fact that I feel like we are in a certain time frame now with the pandemic that it is bringing a lot of healers and spiritual workers mm -hmm. to the forefront to kind of embrace their gifts because they've been so busy like you said you were busy in the corporate world and everybody else that was doing their jobs they probably were spiritual already and there were already healers and things like that but we didn't have time to focus on solely that spiritual path and i think um you know it's so important for us to focus on that um, the fact that you are able to do it remotely. I think a lot of people that are tuning in, they don't understand, or they sometimes prefer going in on, you know, in person to people for psychic readings or to get their cards read or to, um, have a phone call situation, but it can be done through email. It can be done through audio, the way that you do it. Um, that's the way that I do my readings. I've never done a really, uh, in person to person, only when I do lives like this okay. and I'll bring on certain people that are clients or, um, you, you know, fans or rays of light, as I call my, my following, uh, my, my soul family, I call them rays of light. And so I'll bring them on and I'll do like a, a live face to face, um, reading with like a mini reading, but I typically don't do it that way because the way my gift works is that I I'm like mm -hmm. an automatic, uh, writer. And so I listen to spirit and then I'm like typing it out. 
um, or speaking it out onto my phone and then that types it out for me. And so then oh. I send my readings out too because girl, I'd have car carpal tunnel syndrome after all those emails. <laughs> oh my gosh. Wait, that's so funny. That's how I started my gift. Is that I how did I channeled into their energies, which mm -hmm. was I think like looking back, it was too intense for like my energetic field, but I would okay. tune into their energy, step into their light. And then I would literally channel all of it. Like that was like three years ago. I used to do that. Oh, wow. Yeah. Like everybody's gift is different. I, I always uh -huh. tell people that, it, you know, we are all one and the same. We're all one collective energy. Um, mm -hmm. and we all work together, uh, you know, in this world to help one another, but our gifts are a little different. Everybody does it different and there's no right or wrong way of doing it. Um, it's just, you know, um, how we, we put those messages together. Now, um, funny thing is like when I was, uh, doing, um, when I was promote, I was, I told Casey, I was like, you know what, I want to go ahead and collaborate with you. And the reason that I, I, I did this is because there's very few people that I collaborate unless I really believe in them. And I believe mm -hmm. that they are the real deal. Um, I'm not going to put my name to them, not because I'm, you know, pretentious or, you know, um, judgmental, mm -hmm. but I have to really, uh, be invested or believe with someone to collaborate. And so I was like, you know what, let me go ahead and, and bring Casey on because you're so genuine, so authentic. It's refreshing. It's a, a great, fresh of breath air, you know, a, a fresh air that, you know, that you get to see someone that is working in their platform and that is authentic and enjoys it and is a truly helping people. And so that's why I, I brought you on. But funny thing is, is that when I was, um, I told Casey, let me go ahead and take care of the promotion. I will um, go ahead and, and do the flyer. And when I posted it, um, a lot of people were commenting when I first posted the flyer, they were like, she looks like Leanne Rhymes. Oh my God. So oh, yeah. funny thing, I told Casey that um, when I was posting, I like to put music with my visuals because for me, I work with music a lot for my own healing and kind of just like to help people heal. Um, when they look at my stories, I'll, I don't talk about that a lot, but I use music. Um, that's why I attach certain songs. And when I was attaching your picture um, to my Insta stories and I was gonna select a song, I was gonna go to Leanne Rhymes. I was gonna go to Leanne Rhymes. I don't know why you look like Leanne Rhymes a little bit, but I was like, I don't know. I just wanna do a song with Leanne Rhymes. And then Spirit was like, no choose kim petras which is she no. is from los angeles and i and I didn't, I didn't know why i did not know why and i just said let me go ahead and choose yeah. kim petras so i chose and then casey was like she messaged yeah. message, messaged me and she was like oh my god i, I was like if you could have seen me i was like <laughs> because okay so the thing is so my mom as she passed away um and she always comes through with her name and it's like but no one believes me either i'm like I'm like, dad, you wouldn't believe it. Mom just gave me a sign. She just like, she always comes through with her name. So when I saw that, I was like, oh my gosh. Because when you ask me to collaborate with you, like I get pretty, like I get like. Nervous. <laughs> yeah, like nervous and like, um, I don't know how to explain it. I just get, I just, I don't know. Anyway. Kind of overwhelmed a little bit. Like you get, start thinking all kinds of things. Yes. Things that like aren't even like, I'm like, oh my God. Like I just like my mind takes off. And so anyways, I felt like my mom, came, when you asked me, literally when you asked me, I felt like my mom came down immediately. It was like, Casey say yes to him. And I was like, but what if I do something? And she was like, Casey, go on a live with Ray. And I was like, I don't know if I want to. And she was like, Casey, do it. So then I was like, yeah, I'll do it with you. And then when I saw her name, I just couldn't, I was like, wow. That's uh, just, you can't. Yeah, and then I told, I told you, I was like, the reason I chose the name was because I heard this voice, which is my, I call him spirit. Um, I work with spirit guides. I have two of them, a lady and a, and a younger guy. Um, on the mm -hmm. other side, and they're always giving me information. They're always um, feeding me stuff, you know, information that I need to know. And sometimes I get it from, you know, the soul energy and, and yada, yada, yada. But I kept hearing Kim, and then we started engaging in a conversation. And then I'll, I'll let you talk about that. But it was crazy because your mom came through. And that's the thing with the gifts. Like, we can, I can't control it. I know that you mm -hmm. probably can't control your gift. Like, whenever something comes to us, it comes to us. And then I started chatting with Casey and it just became something where her mom started giving her confirmations and validations that she's still here. And I felt like for you at that point, it was, it was very healing as well. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And <laughs> I've never, 
like I've had messages from my mom before and obviously I'm super spiritual like I'm spiritual for a reason but I've just never had like the confirmations that I've always needed from my mom and so I feel as though and you of course know this spirit will always come through the way they need to come through so if you're channeling like certain messages for someone but then like the next person you work with it's totally different it's because that soul needs to hear those messages and so you're your technique always changes up kind of. And so for exactly. the technique that you use with me, I could tell it was just my mom coming forward to be like, no, I see this. Like, I see what you're doing. Because <laughs> um, you said something like seashells and like a glass. Polka dots, candle. the polka dot. Oh, the polka dots. Oh my gosh, yes. Yeah. So he said he saw um, black Red and white and polka yeah. dots with giggles. Does that make sense? And I was like, what? And then I realized my dad had sent over a picture um, of dresses that he's sending out to San Diego, California for my nieces that are black and white polka dots. So it was my mom coming forward to say, I can see that your dad bought these and that they're being sent out to San Diego. So it's like those confirmations that I need to know that she's still around. Yeah, you know, I think the thing with, with uh, mediumship and the gift of mediumship and spirit, how they come through, I know that you are also a medium because the, the things that you say, you connect to a lot of past lives and spirit yeah. just, and every reading is different for all of us i even tell my clients like when i do a reading for them um every reading is going to be entirely different it's not going to be the same information even if i read them one or two times later there's going to be changes because our free will changes um certain outcomes but going back to spirit and to your mom um the way that i was explaining to you a lot of the stuff that comes to me is like i've learned with my gift to trust it and to not try to interpret a lot of it, but just give the information as I see it. Because when we start trying to like interpret it or put our own spin on what we are getting, it can really be very confusing and it can cause us to give an information that somebody can't relate to right away. And a lot of times those things will not make sense immediately until maybe weeks or days. Um, because when you're in that moment, you know, you're conversing with someone or you just got a reading and you're listening, it takes time to process that information, relax and make the connection. Like you were very fast to connect to the information, but some people don't connect right away. Uh -huh. And I feel like yeah. that's the reason that um, if you can't connect to a psychic reader immediately, it doesn't mean that they're necessarily wrong or that they are not giving, getting the right information. It just means that you may need time to process it and soak it in. That could be weeks, months, you know. Yeah. I also feel, too, that when um, very psychic people give information to people, sometimes, honestly, it might never make sense to you. But... If your soul heard it, your soul needed to hear it, and it's basically tying it up in a bow and it's sending it off so that your soul doesn't have to heal or or hold on to that energy anymore. So no matter what, anything that any psychic or spiritual leader tries to give you, it's always some type of message. It's a, a message for your human side. It's a message for your soul side. It's a message for something that is connected to you. Yes, I, I truly believe that. I really feel like, like, I, like you said, like nothing is coincidence. Like if you heard it for a reason, there's a reason for it. And you need to really just um, take the message and hold on to it. Because like I said, later on, it could be some kind of validation for you. I wanted to ask you, um, when did you realize in your life, like in your, in growing up, because you're young still, but uh, I, well, we're both young, I'm just going to say, but um, yeah. when, at what point did you realize, like, did you, did you realize from early on as a little girl that you had some, you were like a little different than other kids? Like, could you see auras and things like that? Um, so not when I was younger, um, mm -hmm. I grew up in Missouri. So I grew up in a very, um, in a place that doesn't really welcome like spiritual, spirituality kind of stuff. It's very much driven like by the Bible yes. and it's nothing outside of the Bible. You have to follow it. And, you know, so I lived that kind of life. Okay. And so I was always very interested though. Don't get me wrong. I would get in trouble all of the time because I would get my friends in trouble too, because I would, um, like I bought a Ouija board without permission. <laughs> I know, oh my I, know goodness. I know darker energies, but I didn't know that back then. 
And yeah. so I, and I would play with that and I would be always, I would always be into astrology and I always wanted to learn about the spiritual realm and I was always super sensitive, but I didn't see auras back then. I couldn't read people back then um, just because I didn't understand it. Right. But I always knew that I wanted some, I wanted some type of connection with that. And so okay. that's kind of what uh, California, that's always in my mind. That's how I always pictured California. I was like, even as a little girl, I was like, that's where all the healers go. That's where all of the, the, all, all of the people who have, not all, I don't want to say that because not all of us are here, but right. a lot of people are, um, you know, they just flock here because it's a certain energy. And so I always knew that. And I always felt I was a little bit different, but I couldn't explain why. And then, um, when I moved out here in 2017 and I had my spiritual awakening, that's when all the gifts opened. That's when I was able to visually have those images and, and tap into people's energies. And that's when I started offering sessions. And to be honest, at the very beginning, what I did was I didn't know what I was good at. I had no idea. I just knew I had the gifts. And so anybody on here that might be listening and, and you may be new to this kind of stuff, do whatever your soul wants you to do and start practicing. Just practice. Offer your sessions for dirt cheap and just practice. And That's do it what like I did. That's what yes. I did. Just like you, I started off doing free readings in a Facebook yes. group. Um, and I was just do, reading people left and right. I would spend hours, Casey, on Facebook groups. And I loved it. Like when I first started, I mean, I still love it. But um, when I first started, I was like, I was so excited it just to, to help bring healing messages to people. And I would just do it for days at a time. And then finally, I began char charging, like you said, really cheap. It was like very affordable, which my readings, I still think they're kind of still affordable and whatnot. But I mean, yeah. like they were dirt cheap, like uh, $10, I think oh, it was yeah. like 10, 15, 25 um, for a reading. And it was, it was so amazing to look back now, uh, five years later, um, how far I've come and how far you have come. I know mm -hmm. that you, you probably look back at your old self, you know, the two or three years ago and you're like, Oh my God. I've oh yeah. So oh, far. this girl is way different. <laughs> I used to feel bad charging people. Oh, and me you, too. But you honestly though, it, okay. So truly, truly, truly spirituality is an energy exchange. It's an energy flow. So you have to, we work with such high realms and higher beings that it doesn't match the frequency on earth so we have to it has to be a frequency flow so it can turn around mm -hmm. and not exhaust us and it took me a really long time to understand that um but yeah whoa I it's changed. like i tell people it's like it's a it's an even exchange like people don't see it as a job uh, or as a career, but it is uh, because yes. it is time and energy that we're putting forth. It's like you wouldn't expect to go to McDonald's. This, this is the kind of analogy I use. You wouldn't expect uh -huh. to walk into McDonald's and ask them for a free cup of coffee and a, a breakfast sandwich because they're not going to give it to you. And if they do give it to you once, they're not going to do that over and over again. But yes. there's this thing like when you start doing things for free for people, a lot of times they want, they, they want more and more and more. And it becomes so imbalanced. And the empath in us starts, like the ego in us is like guilt tripping us. And it uh -huh. wants us to just continue because we don't want to upset people and we want to give. But it's just, it's not it's not conducive to our well-being and to our higher self and i do i firmly believe that it can cause like karmic issues down the road allowing those behaviors and tendencies to continue and not honoring yourself uh honoring your higher self and honoring your gift because the gift is given to help people and whether or not you see it or not like i'm not you but like people that are tuning into this late, later on um, i'm going to put this on youtube and igtv um, regardless if people understand it or see it, see it, that it is, um, the reason why we charge, you know, for what we do. Um, ultimately, you know, it, it all works out in the end because they get something, they get to take away with it. Um, something that is tangible, whether it's an email an audio, um, but they get that, that kind of healing. So I'm just so happy, you know, that, you have come so far and you are doing what you're doing. Um, have you experienced any kind of negativity or from jealousy from other people in the spiritual community? <laughs> that's a pressing question. I know that I shouldn't be asking, but I just want to ask, no, to ask everybody. I'm going to ask so much. 
Okay, so I, I that's so funny you just asked because literally one of my really good friends just said, you're so lucky you've never had any negative spiritual connections. And I truly, truly believe that the universe knows that if I had any negative spiritual interactions or people trying to knock me down, that I would have been like, nope, I'm not doing this work. This is not for me. Yeah. And I would have ran the other way. So I have been very lucky to have positive experiences. Um, and I feel like it's also really made up of my soul signature too. I, I, I am kind of, I've been told by the universe, like I'm a light to other people. And I, I, I exude this type of light that people can see and pick up from me. So then I naturally am attracting those people so that um, I'm helping their soul frequencies too. But I haven't had those experiences. I know that people have, I know, but in your work too, I feel like you can uh, get more of those, those deeper energies because you're working with so many different types of energies. Am I right? Yeah, like, you're absolutely spot on. It's like everything that I do, like um, I have so many different people from every walks of life, like um, people that are going through heartbreaks or going through mm -hmm. divorces, people that are going through certain health conditions, um, people that have lost everything that are homeless and now getting back their, on their oh. feet, people yeah. that... Um, just that you know they've gone through some level of abuse as a child and now they're dealing with it as an adult and looking for questions because a lot of people that are damaged in some way are looking for healing in their later years as adults and uh it it's kind of it makes them think you know who can i reach out who can i trust to and there's a lot of people who may be a little judgmental when they read people. Like I've come across some readers myself um, yeah, that were nice. just like flat out rude. Like um, I had this one guy, I'm not going to go into it, but he was from Los Angeles area and I had him read me and it was so yeah. like he was projecting his own life oh, yeah. um, <laughs> struggles and stuff onto me. And I was like, oh my god this is what people mean that they go to certain readers uh -huh. and they're just like treated like shit and i'm like yeah. that is so um not spiritual at all you know wait I, that's so funny whenever i go to readers i've been to a lot and i've only had success with a few one being you of course <laughs> and then a few other people but i swear when i go to readers they start talking a lot about themselves oh my god i hate and that I'm like, I'm like, what? But it's like a recurring theme. So I don't really go to a lot of readers because I feel like it's this energy that I'm accidentally bringing out of them and I'm paying all this money to get these readings. And then and they're using they that time and then talk, talk about, about their own experiences and they're like projecting a lot of that stuff. So that's the reason that I feel like a lot of people that go, be careful if you go to a reader and you get maybe like some kind of a reading and it's like, you know, they talk about their, their own personal stuff during the reading because a lot of that could oh, be yeah. that they maybe were, they, they're single still, they have had heartbreak. And so they may not see a man in a certain way. And if you're a woman coming in and they're a woman, they're going to be drawn from their pain and their source if they haven't healed. Uh -huh. And instead of clearing their energy, like my friend Pam, she's a healer too, but she is a, a you know, witch, spiritual reader, psychic. Um, she works with tar tarot and all that. And one of the things that she um, does during her readings that I always have done is to always pray i believe in god i believe in source and i pray always to remove my ego from my readings uh, because of the fact that i don't want my personal experiences and my personal um you know heartache and things to take precedence over the reading and so i always try to remove ego and remove my own personal you know opinions and stuff from every single reading that I do. And I feel like that, that helps establish a connection. So if you're out there and you are a reader and you're having trouble connecting using your tarot cards or using your gift like I do or Casey does, um, one of the biggest recommendations that I can give you is to pray and ask that your ancestors and your spirit guides and your angels, your guardian angels come forth and strip away all ego, all um, influences. And, and I think that gives you a better reading. Yeah. I always go to the same place too. Like I have a certain like designated spot in my home where I've opened up like a portal where that's where, that's where I go every single time because it drains down energy. 
into, you know, what I'm trying to connect with. Um, and yeah, the prayer and also disconnecting is just as important as connecting. I always disconnect at the very end and I'm like, okay, this is their journey now. They have to figure it out. They've received the messages they needed to receive. Please support them and guide them. Um, because I want, I want, I want them to move on. I want them to move into their new chapter, which I'm excellent at moving people into new chapters. But um, I also feel we can't, we don't hold on. We can't hold on to the stuff that we tell them because we just work with so many people. And I don't know if you, if you experience this, but I literally forget everything after I everything, met someone. Girl, everything, girl, everything. Like if people are coming back to me, you told me that I was good. You said yada, yada, yada. I'm just like, really? I did? Oh, I, I, I don't remember. So like, when we're oh, channeling, yeah. people don't understand that sometimes there, like, there are certain things that I'll remember and it'll trigger me. Like something will trigger yeah. it. Or if I go back and read an email reading that I sent to someone that I typically delete, like I, I kind of, since it's confidential, I don't want it. You know, I kind of delete and get rid of it afterwards. But the fact that, you know, that if, if I do have something say, which is very rare, um, I'll go back and read it. And then I'm like, Oh my God. Okay. I remember that. Or they send me a copy of the email, you know, that I did a reading on, uh, you know, weeks or months later, then I, I can remember that. But it's crazy because typically I don't uh, remember, but I, I want to do a reading on you and you're going to do a reading on me. Um, I'm going to give you some insights on things. This, this is not going to be mediumship. It's going to be more psychic stuff that I see for you. Um, okay. please, um, please keep an open mind on it and hold on to anything that, um, that comes through. The one thing that I feel for you is that there is going to be, um, you're going to be approached by someone to, to do like teaching courses and teaching healing in some kind of capacity over the next two years. Um, I do feel like your business, your spiritual business and practice is going to definitely um, increase. You're going to expand in that area as well. There is also something about working with a shop. I don't know this is like a crystal shop or a metaphysical shop, but someone, this is going to be like a female that is going to kind of bring you together. And I also see you working fairs or expos. These are spiritual places. So there's like traveling. I also feel like for you, the East Coast comes up a lot, um, like the Big Apple NYC, once this is all over, that you will be going over there for some reason. I don't know exactly the specifics behind that, but I get that. I also see you kind of um, expanding what you do with your moons, uh, with the artistic side of, of what you do. Um, and actually, I don't know what this is, but spirit keeps showing me like pottery and clay. So I don't know if you collect things that are like pottery or antique pottery or clays, but there's like something about going into that kind of like maybe collecting certain things for you. I also feel like, um, I don't know your, your personal love life or anything, but there's changes. And I will say that, um, okay. positive changes happening within the next, uh, I want to say year uh, for you. I feel like it's all good and exciting and spontaneous. <laughs> um, so I get that for you as well. I also, I really do feel like genuinely your gifts are going to evolve. Um, a lot of what you have, you're very strong on all your gifts that you have now. They're going to like multiply. Um, I also see you doing blog, uh, blogging or blogging and having more of a presence online. Um, I'm sorry, I'm giving you just like all these things random, but I want, want you to uh, know exactly before I forget. I also see you doing um, some kind of book um, eventually that you're going to be guided to. I think your guides are going to talk to you. And they're going to be like, Casey, I need you to write a book maybe on healing um, or to help people, you know, uh, connect to their gifts. But your, your mission here on earth is not stuck to the corporate world or to working in an office type of environment. I feel like these, uh, this whole pandemic has shifted a lot of things within you and has made you plan ahead and um, and look for it. You may go back to it temporarily, but I feel like solidly you're, you're kind of um, building something greater that you're going to step into um, over the next couple of months. There's also, I don't know if I mentioned radio for you, but there is something of working with a radio show in the future. And then the other thing that I got was Florida. I don't know what the connection is to Fort Lauderdale or Miami, but there is something with the East Coast. Again, a lot of East Coast. And then um, they kept showing me mermaids and dolphins. And so like with you, if you collect mermaids or if you um, 
you should collect mermaids and you should like co collect uh, dolphins or whales. I don't know why, but they're showing me a lot of sea creatures. You connect to the water. Um, you are a star seed. I think you already know this. You are um, a very evolved spiritual being, uh, very old soul. Um, even though you're young in this body, you're a very old soul. Um, and it comes, like, I feel like you are Pleiadian. I just have to say, I feel like you are Pleiadian. Um, so that's the tea. That is what I got for you. Like, um, I feel like it's, you're on a good, positive journey. You do attract, hi, Madison, you do attract a lot of positive people and positive energy. And it, this is just a continuation and evolution for you. A lot of your struggles, I feel like you may have endured them more when you were younger and a lot of us spiritual workers typically experience that and then later on um, we experience a lot of um, better times and happier times and for you that's what I get my dear all of it really makes sense like yeah. every time you said something I was like oh my gosh <laughs> it's like and it's the, you know what's really funny that just stuck out to me the the part about you mentioning clay so I don't know what it is about clay, but I've started following all these clay, like earring makers on Instagram. So it makes sense why you pick that up. I don't know what it means. I have no idea, but all I know is all of a sudden I'm so attracted to clay and I loved clay making when I was younger too. I think that you're going to pick up on it again. I feel like it's going to be cathartic for you. It's going to be a way for you to get um a lot expel a lot of the energy um that you hold on to or that that you kind of you know give to people i feel like it's going to be a balance for you because i literally what they're showing me is like seahorses i don't know like a seahorse with a bowl like uh, pottery um and these are all bright colors and stuff so i feel like you may make some pieces or try it out in yeah. the future but i feel like you're going to definitely expand in in so so many ways and you're going to end up working with like a lot of your um your girl colleagues i feel um a lot of your friends they're going to be like there's going to be this collaboration um and i really feel like it's going to be an event that is taking place so yeah it's exciting <laughs> Yeah, no, that makes sense. In the shop, I felt called to, um, I want to read people's auras in shops. Wow. Like, I want to go in, in there and, like, be, like, a person. Like, specifically, I don't know why. I feel like it's a flower shop, like, a, just a normal shop where people go in. And then all of a sudden, there's, like, an aura reader that can help you because – uh, this pandemic, I feel like is opening up people to spiritual stuff. And I feel like in the past, it used to be like, Ooh, she's spiritual and witchy and creepy. And, and I just want to be in there and be like, would you like me to read your aura? And like, it just be such a normal, normal thing. I feel like that's coming. So it's interesting. You picked up on that. You would benefit like from um, reaching out to my friend, um, which is like a soul sister too. Her name uh, is Mystic Michaela, and um, she is amazing. She is an aura reader, but she's a psychic medium. And um, she's so, so amazing. And I love her energy. She reads auras just like you do. So I think it's so interesting. So um, if you want to read my aura, this is your chance. <laughs> okay, yeah, I'll read your, I want to read, yes, I want to read yours. Okay, let me tune in. Because So my gift is a lot of people ask me how I see auras. And so my spirit team knows me very well. So they know that if I were to walk around and see auras on everyone, it would literally drive me insane. So I don't see auras when I walk around. Sometimes I do. Like um, like an example, I went to um, I went to Legoland with my son, Phoenix. And I don't see anybody's auras. But like this lady standing right in front of me had this like vibrant, vibrant um, purple aura. Um, but like that was just one out of how many people did I see that day. So I'm really grateful because uh, that would be so much energy to see auras all the time. Um, okay, so let me see what yours looks like. So I don't actually even have to look at the person when I do aura readings. It's like um, this energy starts forming around like the physical body that I see in my third eye. Um, okay, so for your aura colors, you have, you have a lot of colors in your aura. Um, right now, which, which, which means a lot. So I'll tell you what it all means. But so right now you have like this, um, literally like a ray of, um, yellow, orange, and red all working with each other. And when I look at it, it goes all across your face. Like it goes like this, like a rainbow. 
Um, and it's not too deep and it's not super, super light. It's like me medium color. And so what that tells me is that you're not at the very beginning of a stage and you're not at the ending of a stage. You're right in the middle of something. And what this in particular means for you is that it's, it's, I feel like you're stepping more into this, um, this honored commitment to yourself and honored growth and honored like confidence and honored happiness where, because the universe is like showing me your energy in the past where you're in the past. It's like, it looks like a darker aura and it looks like there's deeper blues in your aura from like the, in the past. Like I'm talking probably even six months ago. It hasn't even been that long since it looked like that. And so the working with these colors uh, together is really helping that confidence shine through, but it's not like you're changing. You're not changing. It's just this internal type of clock. That's like, that's, um, that's changing for you. So it's, it's stepping more into the confidence and the happiness piece. So I feel the universe is putting, like they're showing me an image of you. And it's like, you're standing in a line and you put yourself first instead of you're putting all these other people, like in the past, you used to put all these other people before you and you push everyone before you to go get their lunch first. But now when the cook makes all the food, you're the one stepping in front of everyone so you can get your food. Um, and it's not a selfish thing at all. Like I feel like the universe keeps coming forward and they're like, don't tell them it's not selfish. It's not selfish. It's much needed. I feel um, you're going to have a really big shift with this because the red is all confidence. Yellow is all happiness. Orange is creativity and connecting with your inner child. So I really want to tell you that you're going to have really, really big, expansive things happen with your own business. Um, like the universe is showing me an arrow and it's going up. And so I feel they're telling me that, um, uh, prices are going up. Like they're literally saying like prices are going up. Um, someone saying revamping, revamping is coming to my left ear. So it's like you're revamping, remarketing. Um, I, was, I, have chills. I have chills because that's something that I struggle with, but I've been thinking about like, because after right now I'm not like, I, I removed all my readings from my website because mm -hmm. I was, uh, I had a sell recently and I'm starting to interrupt you, but you are okay. hitting so many things and the color red, I've been told by spirit this year that this year in particular, I had to work with the color red, hence red. the red roses behind me. Yes. Um, so even though I don't wear a lot of red, um, I work in trying to incorporate red when I do go out or when I'm doing something like filming my videos, um, orange, I've been also told by spirit to work with orange spot on and then yellow um this ring i don't yes. know oh my gosh, ring. They're, they're like sparkles of, of those are uh yellow those are, those those are am amber colors. yeah uh and so like you're so spot on i'm keep going keep going <laughs> okay yeah because i'm not done yet that's only some of your I'm sorry. You, still, you still have more too that i have to explain um okay so but anyways yes definitely stepping in more to the red that red aura it's still really light though. So that, so what that tells me is that you're not completely stepped into it yet. Um, but you're in the middle. So it just means that you're on, you're on your way there. Um, and like, I think I, I remember telling you even over text too, like your aura is really, 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 really pushing you to revamp. Like, I cannot express that enough. I don't know what kind of revamping you want to do. Oh, yeah. No, you're it, right. There's a lot like, of things I can't talk about that I am revamping and I'm going to do. Like, there's so much. You also hit something that very close, like, about the darker blues in the past, like, the past six months. Like, last year, I had so many things that I don't talk about to even to my rays of light or to the audience, but I'm going to talk about it here now. Um, like, things that um, I went through, I'm just going to touch on them. I had uh, was diagnosed with diabetes um, in July of 2019 and now I'm pre-diabetic. So I reversed that luckily, thank God, hopefully I get rid of that. It was a big thing, but a lot of that was drawn by, uh, energy leeches or vampires that I was associated with in, in some capacity. And if those were like 2019, like from, um, May up until like December were the, was the worst time in my life because there were so many personal obstacles, um, brought upon, um, ex exterior people in my life that um really um it really crushed me on in so many levels and i could have let it destroy me in some kind of way but i kind of just forced oh. through it and i didn't want to talk about it because I, I didn't want the pity party i didn't want to you know be like oh my god woe is me and and whatnot but um yeah 2000 you're so spot on like 
last year, like it was the worst year of my life. Just so many things. It was one after another, one after another. And I felt like, when is this going to stop? One of the things for me was like losing friendships. Like I'm the type oh, yeah. of person as a Gemini, I don't like losing people, uh, friendships. And there were just so many friendships that were long distance friendships that were lost. And it was very painful for me. Um, so much so that I was like terrified like this year, but this year has been a lot better. Like you said, I oh, feel yeah. like uh, it's been a, a whole different leap, a uh, different chapter. I'm involved in so many projects I can't talk about, but yes, revamping, revamping, revamping. revamping. <laughs> Is there, have you, you don't have to tell me, but I keep seeing a picture of you all in, you're like, you're in white. It's literally all white. I don't know what that means. I mean, maybe, uh, maybe it's really funny small. because I've been told by Sir to um, do a photo shoot like later on. Um, and that's one of the photo shoots I want to do is like dressed all in white. So that, that's scary. Okay. Like, I have chills. Yes. So it's coming. And like, I don't know why, but whenever you change, um, yeah, oh my gosh, they're giving me so many messages. Like, whenever you change your. Um, you're like your imagery, like your background. It's like the you're that's signifying to other people that you're changing your vibration. Like people, people are already noticing you're changing your vibration. That's why you've lost a lot of friends. Um, but you're gonna start really getting more involved with higher vibrations, higher beings, and you're going to start getting more involved with um, people who you're still going to be giving them advice, but you're going to start attracting a different like clientele that, mm -hmm. um, I don't, you're good. You'll be happier with this clientele. Yes. Not, like I, not, I, not I love losing. my clients and everything, but a lot of the clients that, um, like a lot of clients, like, well, I have a lot of clients, but a lot of people yeah, from the past have not uh, followed me into the present, like 2019, I'm sorry, 2020. Like it's been an evolution. So a lot of people have gotten away from me because I, I'm a lot more vocal now. I feel in like, in some ways, like there are certain political views I think people are looking at. And I, I've kind of stepped into those boundaries, not crossing them so much but I'm more outspoken and I'm not as timid as I used to be I would just let people walk all over me and I wouldn't say anything but like I've gotten to a point where I defend myself and if I have something to say I'm going to say it in a very public manner and I use my platform that way uh, unapologetically being myself uh -huh. so everything that you're saying makes total total sense I don't want to exhaust you um, but I do want to open it up I really thank you so much for those messages I am going to hold on to them um, but I want to go ahead and, and open it up now since we have about 12 minutes to the people, uh, yeah. all of our viewers. Uh, if you have questions for me or Casey, please ask. Um, yeah. Also, Casey, where can people book a reading with you um, if they want to like reach out to you? So you guys can find me. Um, well, my website's changing. You'll find me on my Instagram. It's underscore Casey Poole underscore. You can, um, I basically use my direct messages as an inbox. So you can direct message me, you can email me, um, and you can go onto my current website that's linked in my bio, uh, but definitely follow me on my Instagram. That's where I, I do lots of daily posts um, and a lot of kind of spiritual daily guidance for you guys. Yeah, underscore Casey Pool. Okay, I'm pinning the comments. So people follow her. Um, you just like, I'm, I'm teaching you something. <laughs> When you um, type in uh, the the thing, you just hold on to it if you want to pin it, and it'll never go up. It, it you know the comments, Casey, you, um, it'll pin it there. So like if you have a guest on your Instagram, um, uh -huh. you can do that. And it'll, so guys, that's her Instagram handle. Follow her there. Um, somebody says, C Casey, come to New York, girl. We'd love to have you. Oh yeah, that's what you said that in my reading. I'm so drawn to the to the to New York and New, New York. York. <laughs> I like, I want to go there and I think that I will. And I, I feel like it's when I'm more like you doing will. this full time, people are going to invite me to come out as like a speaker or to do like massive healing work on people. I'm not really sure. I'm open to it. Literally. I tell the universe every day. I'm like, universe, if you want me to do this full time, show me the way because I am ready and I want to. So, <laughs> so I know bring, that's right. bring it on. <laughs> Let's see well, what, somebody what, says, when do you, uh, when do you, 
when do you think the world is going back to some normal? Honestly, guys, I feel like that's a question that a lot of us are getting. I honestly feel like by summertime, we're going to start seeing a lot more people going back to some sense of normality. And I've said this over and over when I do my readings on YouTube, like uh, insights on the world cases and things. It's going to help. Somebody asked, Laura McQueen asked, how do you know if you're having a spiritual awakening? I'll let you take that one, Casey. <laughs> oh, man. Okay, Laura. What is it, Lauren? Um, so you'll notice that when you have a spiritual awakening, that things shift in your life and they feel really uncomfortable. Um, a lot of times people think of a spiritual awakening as, oh, I'm connected to the universe and I am so, you know, it, it's like this lovely experience. But to be really honest, in order for you to have a true, true um, connection with the universe. You have to leave the old you behind and you have to connect with this new version of yourself. And you basically are like shedding like sink skin. So what that means is that when you have a spiritual awakening, you lose a lot of friends, you, you know, you may lose your job, you may go to a new location. It's like a lot of shedding. Um, and then when you start having more of a spiritual awakening, you'll notice that you're extra sensitive you'll notice that you get a lot more tired. You'll notice that you want to isolate yourself a lot more. Uh, you'll notice that even just by going to the grocery store and like having talks with like people in line, you'll be like, oh my gosh, I can feel this person's energy. I need to go home and like take a nap. So it's it's a lot of just energy comes Like your senses are heightened in so many different so ways. So heightened. Yes. Like when I went through my spiritual awakening, I had like a lot of spidey crawling sensations all on my crown chakra, all oh, on my yes. front eye. Like I felt like bugs were like literally crawling all over me. I went through temperature changes, like a lot of hot flashes. I know I'm uh -huh. not in the pause, but <laughs> I thought it was that. And like, it was like that. I also had a lot of heart palpitations. Um, oh, yeah. I had a lot of... Um, vision problems like I started seeing blurry and I thought thinking I started thinking maybe it's my eyes maybe I'm going blind maybe it's health conditions yeah. I would go to doctors and they would be like you're absolutely fine like there's nothing wrong with you physically and yeah. there was no explanation and yeah that's how spiritual awakenings are they're so di everybody has different experiences they're uncomfortable so like anybody on here that has not had one yet I and everybody that I've ever talked to, they're a little uncomfortable. But once you get out of it, then you're just, you're just, oh my gosh, the world is just different. And then you're like, well, yeah. the universe really is real. And I really am supported. So hang in there because it, it, it'll happen. And everyone's is also at their own pace too. Like mine just happened to be literally in the same week. I don't know why the universe did that to me, but all of my senses came open in that short time. But the universe will always expand you the way you need to be expanded. Absolutely. I love that. It's so, so, so true. Um, somebody asked here, um, somebody says, come to Salem, Massachusetts. We would love to go to Salem, Massachusetts. And then, um, let me see. Casey has loved your readings. Both are so powerful. Oh, Casey, I've been dealing with sleep insomnia and I meant to continue having it. That's uh, Jerry. Um, you know, I don't feel that you're going to continue having sleep insomnia. I feel like the universe is coming forward to you when you're very, um, pure in your light. And I feel like that's when you, so what I mean by that is when you're not overthinking things. And so the universe is coming forward to you in a time where they can really grab your attention. So when you're sleeping at night, all of the, the veils kind of ripped off. Um, there's, there's nothing that's stopping you from, from getting messages. And so what I really recommend you do is to ask the universe when you're, when you can't sleep, what are you trying to tell me right now? What is it that I need to be learning right now? And then as you ask those questions, you're going to be noticing, um, you'll notice that you get messages, but you might not get messages. It might just be energies coming forward. Um, but the more that you ask that, you'll be able to start slowing uh, or going back to sleep again and slowing down again. But um, I feel as though like in the day, you might be worrying too much and the day, the day might just be going too quickly for you. So they're trying to grab your attention in a way that you're going to listen. So once you do that, you'll notice you can sleep. So I, I recommend you do that. Uh, just ask the questions. What are you trying to tell me? Great, great advice. I really, really like that. Um, and then we have Lainey Bear Six. She says, what was your, both of you, first spiritual experience? And when was it? Okay, for me, it was at the age of four. And it was um, antiques that were brought in from um, people that didn't want them. 
uh, my dad had brought them into the household and um, I saw spirits in them and they were making faces at me and scaring me completely. Oh and that was my first experience. And then my mom, who was a medium, uh, she ended up throwing them away. And as soon as she did that, she's wise. She knew um, that the whole entire haunting, it stopped completely. When was your first experience? <laughs> uh hi elena she's one of my uh regular clients i work with her a lot um gosh what was my first i've had i don't know um <laughs> i've had so many i think an angel, an angel visited me like by my bedside at night when i was super super young um and like made themselves like visible to me but i was so young that i think that that almost scared me so then i, I and, I, and so they didn't come back for a really long time. No one ever approached me again. Um, but then during my spiritual awakening this time around, um, I had like a, I just, um, I was getting super vivid dreams because that's how they knew that I could connect with them again through dream. And then, so once I opened up to the dream aspect, then they started giving me real life. Um, Absolutely. You know, that that's so true. Like a lot of times um, people who are opening up to their spiritual gifts and their mediumship gifts in specific, they um, they receive a lot of vivid dreams or lucid dreaming. Mm -hmm. So you wake up from it and you're like, oh, my God, it feels like I was just there. And so a lot of people that are like astrally traveling in their dreams and connecting, they tend to wake up like all tired or like feeling like you didn't sleep and you slept good. But yeah. it's just that like you're doing a lot of us. I think a lot of people don't realize that we do a lot of work when we're asleep on the other side like if, especially if you're a medium or um, our souls are always traveling and want and going out through the the ether <laughs> uh -huh. um, and, and we're doing work over there but I, I want to uh, I'm gonna wrap it up because we're gonna it's gonna cut us off here okay. but I want to thank you Casey so so much for coming thank on you. here um, I love you I think that you're fabulous and I know a lot of my rays of light here that are listening if you're looking for healing you're looking for readings again go ahead and message DM Casey she's amazeballs so uh, <laughs> so are you you're just as amazing oh thank you so so much so love and light to each and every one of you this was soul chat with ray and this is casey pool bye thanks everyone bye